how you doing people? It's Spencer Serious here with the news at nine. And I'm with Ilya Headliners. And we're giving you the headlines which no one else is giving you in a way that no one else is giving it to you. But before we do that, make sure that you like, comment and subscribe, tag your friends, make sure they see our videos. And also if you want to comment in the comment section, put subjects that you'd like us to speak about. In, in for future reference and we answer all comments as possible if we can. So today we wanted to start on the news with Russia and Ukraine and the potential for World War Three. So what do you think of that Aliyah? Does this bother you at all that you think they, they might this could be the start of a third world war? Potentially yeah, I do think so because I know that we've learned just recently that Russia actually has masses of troops. I think it's about 150,000 people. They're around Ukraine right now waiting to get ready. They're just waiting on a signal from the troop leader or whatever. To... Putin. Yeah. Putin, the leader of the Russian army and the Russian country. Wanna be Hitler. <laughs> Maybe. Could be the next Hitler. Who knows? You never know. This this is what we're talking about here. We could be rolling into World War Three, people. And these are the important things that need to get spoken about. And we're going to put some videos up now from Russia and um, Ukraine. And uh, here's some video clips now for you to watch. What is the latest intelligence you have regarding the withdrawal of Russian troops from the border with Ukraine? I wish I could give everybody better news about this, but I have to tell you that the picture is continuing to be very grim. And Serious. today, is, as I'm sure you've already picked up, uh, a kindergarten was shelled in uh, what we're taking to be a, uh, what we know was a false flag operation uh, designed to uh, uh, to discredit the Ukrainians. Salt now and listen out for the NATO Secretary General. Uh, just met to address uh, Russia's continued military build-up in and around uh, Ukraine. This was a substantive um, discussion on the most serious um, security crisis uh, in Europe in uh, decades. Allies welcome all diplomatic efforts, and there are signs from uh, Moscow that uh, diplomacy could uh, continue. But so far, we do not see any sign of de-escalation on the ground. No withdrawals of uh, troops or equipment. This may, of course, change. However, what we see today is that Russia maintains a massive invasion force ready to attack, with high-end capabilities from Crimea to Belarus. This is the biggest concentration of forces in Europe since the Cold War. <clears throat> from the start, NATO allies have made clear that further Russian aggression against Ukraine would have a high cost. And we have called out Russia's actions, plans and disinformation. What we're doing is making sure that we do everything to strengthen the package of sanctions that will follow immediately should there be uh, a Russian invasion. We're strengthening the eastern frontier of, of NATO and I'll be going to, uh, to the European Security Conference in Munich uh, a little bit later on uh, over the weekend to, to talk about what we're going to do to, to unify the West. Are you having to rush forward your ban on tier, tier one visas, these so-called golden visas, because you're worried about a rush of applications? I mean, is this, a, is this a sign of a crackdown on Russian money in the UK? I think it's very important that we uh, address all the issues that we can as fast as, as we can. And uh, we have already some very tough laws on, on money laundering, on uh, people uh, laundering ill-gotten gains here in the, in the UK. Uh, but clearly, uh, it's time to, to bring in some tough sanctions against the, uh, the Russian regime, against uh, big Russian uh, companies, organisations of strategic importance, and also making sure that we, uh, we, entered it, we stop the raising of funds by Russian companies on London financial markets. That's a very, very tough sanction that we'll be, uh, we'll be bringing in. What we also need to do, and I'll be saying this, and I've said this before, we've got to end uh, the dependence of, uh, of the West, of Europeans in particular, on Russian hydrocarbons. We can't be blackmailed in this way uh, by Vladimir Putin. It is not too late for Russia to step back from the brink of conflict and choose the path of peace. NATO has sent concrete written proposals to Russia 
on transparency, risk reduction and arms control. We have yet to receive a response. I reiterate my invitation to Russia to meet again in the NATO-Russia Council. NATO will not compromise on core principles. The right uh, of each nation to choose its own path and our ability to protect and defend all allies. We have already enhanced our deterrence and defence with more troops, planes and ships and high readiness of the NATO response force. These steps are defensive. NATO is not a threat to Russia. We do not know what will happen in Ukraine, but the situation has already demonstrated we face a crisis in European security. Moscow has made it clear that it is prepared to contest the fundamental principles that have underpinned our security for decades and to do so by using force. Uh, we've got to, to end that. And I just want to say one thing finally about, about what's happening in, in Ukraine. I do think it's, it's a, there is still time for the, the Putin regime to step back. There's still time to avoid a catastrophe, a catastrophe uh, for Russia, a catastrophe for, the, for Ukraine and for the world. And uh, that is that if Russia were so mad as to invade, I don't think people should imagine that this will be a brief uh, business. This will be a bloody and protracted conflict in which I'm afraid that uh, there will be many casualties, uh, and including many but Russian man casualties. And, uh, I, I just hope that people in Russia oh, can see that. What it is. Serious. And um, so, what do you think about them videos, guys? Um, have a leave your comments in the comments what you think about the videos we provided on Russia and what your opinion is. Do you think we're heading into World War Three, or do you think uh, it's all just scaremongering? I'd like to hear your views and I'm sure Leah would love to hear your views as well.